Hello and welcome to the 21st round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at the infamous Grand Detour of Western Illinois. Qualifying in the pole for the first time in his career is Frank Gazzaretta with Alex Phillips falling just short of his fourth pole of the year on the outside. John Jefferson in third, good effort for him. James Hewitt on the outside of row two. Joe Craig on the inside of row three, excellent effort for him. And Ben Worthington qualifies eighth with Louis Ballard on his inside. Jerry Myatt puts it 10th on the grid. Great effort for him. Chris Benson would be 11th, and he participated in both the truck and lights races this week. Ryan Jeffries won the pole for the truck race with El uh, Andy Lambert and Vinny LaBeouf doing stints at the front of the field. And the errant truck of Matthias Leskinen would involve Will Crawford, Benson, and Isaac Michaels in a crash early on in the going. Michaels would battle back and would ultimately attempt to catch Vinny LaBeouf, but LaBeouf would take the win uh, in the PCC trucks race. Kelly Thomas led the field to the start in the lights race where they'd be going four wide early on. Unfortunately, that would end in disaster when uh, they'd go five wide, get pinched into the wall. There goes Denny Adams over the wall. Tiffany Matthews rolling there. Adams would continue on, but Matthews would be done for the day. He'd get that car back on the other side of the wall. Championship leaders would battle at the front of the field with Dustin Oliver and Sam Burkhart battling for the championship lead, but ultimately it would be James Beverly making a move on the last lap to pass J.C. Carpenter, and he would take his first PCC Lights win here at Grand Detour yesterday. Gaspar D'Souza and Lewis Jones round out the back of the field. And with that, Frank Azzaretto is going to lead the field to the green flag. He gets a good jump on the inside over Alex Phillips, and he's going to take a pretty big margin down into turn number one, opening up already two, three, four car lengths over John Jefferson there. Joe Craig making a move on the inside of uh, Jefferson. But Frank Azzaretto, first career pole, and he's going to lead his first laps of the season here today in this number 36 ROG Motorsports car. John Jefferson doing battle with Joe Craig back here for second place. This is a pretty unusual top three. Uh, John Jefferson holding strong there in second place, driving for his career seemingly as uh, Stefan's racing is definitely in danger of relegation. We had an incident on lap number three. Israel Bruce and Lewis Jones get together in the back and Israel Bruce goes hard into the pit wall, throws it sideways there, throws it in reverse, and uh, that's interesting. Uh, he'd keep going, but would fall multiple laps down in the process. Chris Benson didn't expect to see him up near the front. He did triple duty here this week, running in the lights and truck series. And he just got around Ben Atkins for uh, fourth place. So Chris Benson having an awesome start to the day here and is running down the leaders. Frank Azzaretto holds a pretty decent gap over John Jefferson, but uh, Jefferson's been reeling him in ever so slightly. Frank Azzaretto uh, really doing a good job up here at the front of the field, uh, having an excellent run. Your points leader, Ike Durbin, sitting in the middle of a manicore sandwich with Louis Ballard and Tom Delgado right behind him, the three teammates. He is in 11th place right now and uh, is the championship leader holding strong over Ben Atkins, but Atkins is a few positions in front as Lewis Jones, who had hit that contact with Israel Bruce, is already going a lap down on lap number 10. This is a 200 lap race and that's not going to bode well for Lewis Jones as this race goes on has Ben Atkins. We mentioned before that uh, he is second place in points. Uh, Atkins in fifth place being challenged by Alex Phillips, the outside pole sitter. Looks like Phillips is going to make a move on the inside. and He's going to take the position as Ben Atkins starts to slide back just a little bit here early in the going. John Jefferson has caught Frank Azzaretto. That's Gaspar D'Souza. They're getting ready to put a lap down. D'Souza really missed the setup here. That car is not handling well. He gets out to the outside and lets the leaders go by. But uh, Frank Ezra de defending the bottom, but John Jefferson continues to hound. Next lap, he's going to try and pull a slide job on the bottom. It's not going to quite work uh, this lap, but next lap, he's got the preferred line through turn one, and John Jefferson is going to take the lead and uh, pull a few car lengths on Azzaretto. Chris Benson has worked his way up to third place, so we've got... Jefferson, Azzaretto, and Benson in the top three. This is uh, a pretty unusual running order right now as Joe Craig is in sixth place doing a great job. He's fallen back a little bit from the start, but this is looking great for Lucas Motorsports as Ben Worthington, who also qualified well, he's up in eighth place doing a great job. We haven't seen either of these two near the front too often 
this year. Uh, they did finish second and third in Germany at the Euro Speedway, but uh, looks like both of them have turned up uh, as of recent. Now this is not Barry Juvenile this week in the 65. This is Donnie Olson, uh, who has last driven a PCC Cup car full time in 2010. Uh, Barry Juvenile did not report to the team HQ after uh, the round of Massachusetts. And uh, Donnie Olson wrecked his primary car, so they brought uh, Barry Juvenile's backup car and threw the sponsors that he was going to have on it this week. Casey Lester is making his second star of the season. The, T, uh, the uh, PCC Lights hot shoe here. Uh, driving for Matthews Motorsports team, he picked up some 11th hour sponsorship from Dunkin' Donuts for this car. And he's running up in the top 20, doing a pretty decent job battling with Akio Gifu there. And uh, we're expecting an announcement to see Lester in the Cup Series within the next couple weeks. So we're excited to hear about that. It's Clay Gibson getting ready to go lap down, and there goes the motor. So uh, he was running in 36th at the time, but uh, that looks like it's going to be the day done for the 77 crew, and they're going to be the first retirement from this race. Uh, Gibson was expecting a bit more speed from him here at this track, but it's his first time at the track, and... He's going to limp that car back to the pits, done for the day. Uh, Clayson Enterprises has been struggling to stay out of relegation. This is their closest rival, Accelerator Motorsports, and uh, Dan Frey is the best running of, the, of those cars in 27th place. So uh, Accelerator Motorsports not really doing themselves any favors if they're going to try and uh, work their way out of this relegation situation they're in, as Greg Woodard and Kurt Pliskin aren't doing much better. John Jefferson trying to put a lap on Duncan Cobb here, and oh, that's, uh, Josh Marshall's really slow there on the apron, but uh, he's trying to battle through some lap traffic, and he's going to pull low, get around him there, as Frank Azzaretto's trying to work through uh, Scott Wollen back there. Uh, seemed to be getting caught up in this mess, but uh, looks like Alex Phillips has worked his way back up to third place now. He's doing a great job. Uh, outside pole sitter, he has the most pulls this season at three, almost had four this week, and he's having a great week. Uh, been hanging around the top 20 in points all season and hoping to break into the top 15 by the end of it as he struggles to get around uh, Duncan Cobb. As James Hewitt from the top 10 is going to come up down into the pit lane on lap 30, reporting some tire problems, and you see there uh, Donnie Olson's also in the pits. Uh, we missed that. He's getting a tire change. I think he hit the wall at some point. Hewitt also hit the wall, and uh, tires were getting ready to go on those cars as Donnie Olson had some more mechanical issues. He's coming out of the pits five laps down. So uh, big issues with that 65 car. Last week's winner at Cape Cod, Louis Ballard, following the lapped car of James Hewitt around Kurt Pliskin, trying to hunt down Ben Worthington for eighth place. Oh, Chris Benson's going to slide a bit wide. He might get some help there, but... Oh, that's contact between Hewitt and Worthington. Worthington's going to go into the wall. That's caution one on lap 38. That wasn't even for position. As you remember, James Hewitt went a few laps down earlier on, and he just dumped him into the inside wall. Absolutely uncalled for. Worthington would continue on, however. Uh, on the restart, Azaretta would lead as uh, most of the field made... Uh, pit stops under yellow. John Jefferson made two pit stops, and it looks like we've already got a caution. Is what are they doing in the back of the field? They restarted five wide. Worthington's going to get hooked by Burnfart Jr. there, and Gaspar de Souza is going to go out of it early. Caution number two immediately after the restart going on board. Looks like Ramsey Cockner pulled into the pits to uh, change a tire. I guess they had a loose wheel in that car, but for whatever reason, they decided, they decided to start five wide in the back of the field, and that was just ridiculous. What were they thinking? As uh, D'Souza goes out of it, he was a few laps down by this point. Scott Wollen, under this caution, would have some nagging electrical issues in that car, but they'd get him back out on track. He would lose two laps in the process as he pulls out there and rejoins the field and uh, mechanical issues affecting Preston Bell as you see Frank Azzaretto brings his car into the pits under caution uh, Preston Bell would get back out on track run a few laps pull it back in and retire from the races Joe Craig has now inherited the lead 
in the 26 car driving for Lucas Motorsports. With Louis Billard and Alex Phillips right on his tail, this is going to get interesting as those two tr those two cars are really fast. Joe Craig holding strong though on the outside, uh, going through turn number four. He's going to retain the lead, but Louis Billard next lap is going to pounce, take the bottom, bringing Alex Phillips with him. Phillips has the speed to get around Craig there with, that's Cameron Taylor back and forth, but Louis Billard's going to take the lead. And Alex Phillips running the bottom, moves up to second place. Ballard taking that middle line, trying to conserve his tires just in case we get a long green flag runway like we had before. As uh, Brian Gallagher, one of the top five drivers in points, having some mechanical issues here today. He has been in and out of the pits uh, for the past few laps and uh, has, already last, has already lost a couple laps in the process. As Alex Phillips makes a move on the bottom and he's gonna take the lead. Three wide in the back there, but Alex Phillips one at Talladega, trying to make it two wins this season in that 71 car. As here's Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer doing battle with Barbara Burt. This is for fifth place, as uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer has had a pretty rough go of it with all the road courses. He is not a road course racer by any stretch of the imagination, but he's up in the top five here today, doing an excellent job as Joe Craig. Oh, he's going to make contact there from third place with the lapped car of Ian Elias. He's going to go hard into the pit wall just like what happened with uh, Israel Bruce, and he's gonna lose several laps. That did a lot of damage to that right front. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some suspension damage on that car, uh, but we're gonna keep an eye on him as looks like uh, Ike Durbin's doing battle with Ben Atkins. He's gonna make a move on the inside. Atkins got a little bit of damage on pit road last time by, but Ike Durbin gonna make a move on the bottom, and if he passes him here, that would secure his points lead at what it is pre-race and he's going to make the move on the bottom and from here on out looks like Ike Durbin's going to be gaining points on Ben Atkins as Akio Gifu has some issues uh, tire going down on that 466 car he's going to bring that car into the pits as uh, he was running up in the top 10 he did some pit strategy as Joe Craig's back in the pits again looks like there are more problems with that uh, 26 than we initially thought and he's going to fall an additional three laps down in the process. Cameron Taylor mentioned him before. He is doing a fantastic job. He's up to third place now with uh, Joe Craig pulling into the pits. And Cameron Taylor looks like uh, this is his third race, possibly third top 10. And uh, if that's not a, if that's not an indication that he needs a ride for next season, I don't know what is. It's, Joe Craig's back out on track, but he is horribly off the pace. As look at this gap that Alex Phillips has pulled over Louis Ballard. Ballard has pulled a pretty big gap over the rest of the field as well, as these two have driven into the distance. As uh, Phillips is hunting down his teammate Bernfart Jr. to put him a second lap down up there. As you can see there, these two have driven off into the sunset. Kyle McWellow looks like this might be his last race in the 52 as Lenny Jacobs is going to be back in this car as soon as Decatur, which is next week. He was at a tire test, uh, Jacobs was, uh, for the 2017 car this week at Chicago Twin. But Kyle McWell is doing a great job. He's up in fifth place. So uh, trying to get an endorsement for next season in a full-time ride as Barbara Burt's going to make the pass and move up to fifth place. But... Kyle McWillow in sixth, not doing a bad job as James Hewitt's in the pits once again. Uh, nagging mechanical issues there for him, and looks like Kurt Pliskin's in the pits as well. He's got some issues. Uh, possible tire rub on that 24 car. As, oh, there goes Joe Craig up in smoke. Looks like that uh, right front damage did a lot more than just to the suspension, as that car's going to slow on track. And uh, I don't think he's going to make it back to the pits as uh, he tries to pull it low, and uh, I don't think he's gonna, why aren't, why, aren't, why aren't you keeping it on the apron, Joe? That's gonna draw the third caution, lap 75, and uh, Joe Craig would be done for the day, but we did have an incident coming back to the caution, as Ian Elias and Barbara Burt get together. Elias goes into the inside wall, Burt goes into the outside wall and tumbles down the track. That's Ben Atkins getting involved there, and, uh, that's Tom Delgado getting a little lick of that as well, too. And that's going to put Ben Atkins out of the race. As Atkins, second in points, he's going to lose a lot of ground in points to Ike Durbin. And they're not going to be able to get him back out on track. As 
Louis Billard leads on the restart. James Hewitt's going to get a lap back there. Uh, Cameron Taylor up to second place. But Billard pulling away as Hewitt got one of his multiple laps back that he's down. But uh, Billard pulling away once again on this restart. He seems to have one of the strongest cars in the field. As uh, Andy Lambert and Casey Lester are up in the top 10 now, making it four wide. They're, hu they're uh, hugging the bottom there as Worthington goes into the pits. But these two have worked their way up into the top 10. They're having an excellent performance. Woodard goes into the wall in the back. We're going to take a look at that in a second. But these two are now up to 7th and 8th on track. As it looks like Woodard gets... Uh, Akio Gifu gets into him there. And Woodard goes hard into the wall. He's going to keep soldiering on. But uh, that's a lot of damage to that 41 car. See how slow he is to get back up to speed. Uh, Ike Durbin, though, doing a great job up here. He's up in the top five as we've got a caution. Caution number four on lap 86 as he was right in front of uh, Andy Lambert. As Israel Bruce goes hard into the wall, Woodard just happened to be there. He pulls down into Sapphire Anderson and goes around. and That's a one-car incident. Pretty rare at Grand Detour as uh, Woodard trying to pull into those pits. Cale Bernfart Jr. is going to be there and that's going to do a lot of damage to that 41 car and take Woodard out of the race as it strange incident Cale Bernfart Jr. pinned up against the wall is going to lose several laps in the process and uh, speaking of Johnson Racing uh, Tom Wilson goes up in smoke from 19th place he was having a pretty solid run even with all the damage on the front end of that car Louis Blard under attack once again on the restart from Cameron Taylor Taylor's going to try and make a move here once he, now that he's uh, closed up on him He's oh he might have a nose there he's going to pull low and Cameron Taylor to the lead in the 39 car. Excellent job for Taylor as he's gonna pull up a little bit of a gap. And that's Wheat Farmer in third. Great run for that 70 cars. We've got a little bit of smoke there coming out of turn four, but no caution. Israel Bruce moves up the track into Burnfart Jr. Takes both cars into the wall. They keep it straight though. Uh, no caution. Both of them are multiple laps down. Casey Lester pulled into the pits to deal with a tire rub. See Ryan Matthews and Duncan Cobb all there in the pits dealing with damage under green flag conditions. So they're going to lose a couple laps each. Preston Bell there has been in the pits for a long time. I don't think we're seeing him back out on track. But Jerry Myatt doing a great job up in the top 10. Uh, last time we saw uh, Myatt up in the top 10 was at Mansfield. Very similar to this track. Uh, Mansfield a bit more, uh, a bit slower than this track. Uh, banking is a lot greater at this track, but Myatt doing a great job as uh, looks like Ballard has worked his way around Cameron Taylor once again to take the lead. And uh, again, once it, this eight car is flying, John Jefferson finally making his way up back towards the front after pitting multiple times under the first caution. He is now up to fourth place, uh, trying to get around Andy Lambert there in the 34, who's having a fantastic run for himself. And Frank Azzaretto is the fastest car on track uh, by just a bit. A couple tenths over John Jefferson, and he has worked his way back up into the top ten after making a uh, couple pit stops under yellow off cycle. Kyle McWilla doing battle here with uh, Ike Durbin, and this is for the lower top ten. I believe this is for ninth place. Kyle McWilla still keeping his nose up in the top ten and clean. Oh, some contact there between James Hewitt and Ike Durbin. But they're going to straighten that out. Mark Burt still doing great. He's in 12th place right now. Uh, still hanging on the lead lap. He's got a bit of damage on that 566. But he's been up in the lower top 10 for a decent portion of this race. And Tom Delgado is the last car in the lead lap. He is in 13th. Uh, so already only 13 cars on the lead lap. With all these cars pitting for tire rubs and uh, falling a lap down under caution. The attrition rate here was expected to be high, but uh, Jerry Myatt's back in the pits. Jerry Myatt's got an issue with that car. Tire rub on the 969 car brings him in under green flag conditions, and he's going to lose a couple laps. So tough break for Myatt, who is up in the top 10 doing a great job. But his teammate, Ramsey Cockner, who normally we expect to be very slow on these ovals, is up in the top 15. He's having a fantastic showing for himself. And uh, he's in 13th place, running right behind uh, Kyle McWilla there. As 
Looks like lap traffic holds up uh, Louis Ballard just a little bit. And there goes the motor. Louis Ballard blows up from the lead. He's going to pull that car low. Cameron Taylor goes around, and he's going to take over the lead. Oh, no. We had known that Manicor's reliability wasn't great, but it hadn't really bit them much all season. And here, in the lead, Louis Ballard blows up. Alex Phillips is going to make a move on the on the outside of Cameron Taylor, and he's going to take over the lead. There's John Jefferson in third. And now this race is opened wide up for Alex Phillips. Looks like he's going to pull away from Cameron Taylor just a bit and put Ben Worthington another lap down. But Alex Phillips, one of the fastest cars on track, now has a clear path to victory if he can keep his nose clean as here's Scott Wallen running up in the top 15. He had some mechanical problems earlier and fell a few laps down, but with all these cars that have been dropping out, receiving damage, and getting lapped, Scott Wollen has picked up the pieces and has maintained a pretty decent pace for himself and is in 15th place, so a great job for Scott Wollen. As Frank Azzaretto has is now the fastest car on track. Uh, he was before, but he's the fastest car on track by about two-tenths a lap now, that 36 car, as Kyle McWulla going a lap down he's in ninth place so uh, that is him going a lap down legitimately for the first time already so he's done a great job to keep himself in the running as we've got a caution uh, caution number five on lap 129 we're going to take a look and see what that's about as oh looks like slow car came along and that was israel bruce tom delgado chris benson making contact as along the way ike durbin lost his hood but he's still up in sixth place so even with the damage, Ike Durbin is looking at a fantastic top 10 showing, and uh, that would continue his streak of top 10 runs as John Jefferson was the first out of the pits under the caution. Akio Gifu, tail end of whatever lap he's on. He, I believe he's 10 or 11 laps down at this point. He's had a rough go of it, but Cameron Taylor there in second place smells blood in the water as John Jefferson has not been the fastest car on track. Here comes uh, Alex Phillips, who is the fastest car on track now after that restart and uh, he is look how fast he's closed the gap to John Jefferson gonna try and pull it low on Jefferson here Jefferson leaves the bottom open trying to save his tires and Alex Phillips is gonna take the lead once again going from about fifth place to first in two laps you can that just tells you the speed that's in that 71 car and he's gonna start to gap uh, John Jefferson there the attrition rate is such that now, Daniel Sharp is up in the top 15. He's about three laps down, but Daniel Sharp has kept his nose clean and uh, looking at a pretty good performance here. We're expecting an announcement about his 2017 plans uh, very shortly as Alex Phillips, Alex Phillips has opened up the gap over John Jefferson. Uh, it's now about half a second, and uh, he looks to increase that here right now. Frank Azzaretto, however, is still a rocket ship and he, as he's going to make a move to the inside of Cameron Taylor there, taking over third place. Now he sets his sights on John Jefferson as we've got a car blowing up there. We're going to take a look and see who that is as we come around here. That's the leader! Alex Phillips has gone up in smoke. Alex Phillips, the leader, 71 car, has gone up in smoke. He's going to pull that car to the apron and uh, park it there as John Jefferson is going to take the lead. Caution number six on lap 148 as he's unable to limp his car back to the pits. On the restart, John Jefferson holding the lead over Cameron Taylor there. Taylor's going to make a bonsai move to the bottom of the track to try and clear him, but he's not going to be able to do so. Looks like Frank Azzaretto trying to make a move. It's going to be not quite three wide for the lead, but three cars all you could throw a blanket over these guys as Cameron Taylor still trying to make a move on the bottom, but John Jefferson holding tough on that high line. John Jefferson not known for his restarts, but he's going to hang on to the lead as uh, Brian Gallagher and Sapphire Anderson have been in and out of the pits uh, for the last 50 or so laps, and they're falling multiple laps down. Uh, so you should see them slow on the apron in these shots coming up, but Andy Lambert having a great run. He's up in fourth place. Uh, this is his best run of the season easily uh, he had a great run at Carbondale earlier but uh, looks like uh, Chris Benson there is really fast he's trying to pass him he's one lap down uh, the 20 car is as you can see the gap that John Jefferson's opened up over Frank Azzaretto there 
He's doing a great job. John Jefferson staring down his first win in 12 years. Uh, he got his only win at the 2004 round of Rockingham, uh, trying to make it number two here today in the uh, Stefan's racing car is, oh, that's Alina Lazareva slow on track. Uh, she's going to bring that car to a halt. She's not going to be able to make it back to the pits, and that's going to draw another caution. And that's going to be another restart that John Jefferson's going to have to survive with 37 laps to go. As on the restart, John Jefferson lets James Hewitt go. Hewitt's going to get another lap back, but he's going to pull that car into the pits immediately as... Uh, that's going to save John Jefferson from having to deal with him. Looks like Frank Azzaretto is going to back off just a little bit. He doesn't quite have the speed that he needs. As looks like Chris Benson has now gotten around Frank Azzaretto. He's trying to get back on the lead lap because I think that Chris Benson knows that he's got a fast car. And if he gets back on the lead lap and another caution, he might be able to win this thing because he is catching John Jefferson right now. Casey Lester after having that unscheduled pit stop is up in the top 15. But there goes Akio Gifu around, caution eight on lap 173. That was a battle for position between uh, Ramsey Cockiner and Casey Lester, but Akio Gifu stuck on the high side. He's 11 or 12 laps down now. I'm not sure why he's still out on track. And James Hewitt is done for the day. Nagging mechanical problems are gonna take the 155 out of this race. And he's going to lose some ground to Ike Durbin. He was third in the championship coming into this race. As another restart for John Jefferson to survive. That wasn't what Chris Benson needed. If he had caught, he would have been back on the lead lap. But he's going to have another shot here to get himself back on the lead lap. As John Jefferson hanging on for dear life. As Chris Benson tries to set him up coming off a of turn number four. Is he going to peak low? Uh, looks like he's going to follow in his tire tracks. So oh, Jefferson slides up just a little bit. That car isn't handling uh, quite to Jefferson's liking. But Chris Benson makes a move on the bottom. He's got a nose there. He's still side by side. He's going to hang with him. And Chris Benson is going to get back on the lead lap. Cameron Taylor trying to pounce. He gets around Frank Azzaretto. But Taylor has to slide up right behind Jefferson. And Jefferson hangs onto the lead with Chris Benson now back on the tail end of the lead lap. Frank Azzaretto back to fourth place, got passed by uh, Andy Lambert there as Sapphire Anderson is really slow on the apron. There's definitely something wrong with that car, but Azzaretto's gonna make a move around his teammate, get back up to third place, and now he sets his sights on Cameron Taylor. Brian Gallagher coming out of the pits there on the bottom as uh, Ike Durbin is still on the lead lap. He is up in fifth place, hanging on for dear life, trying to stay up in the top five. And uh, it's going to be a big points haul for that five if he can keep that up. As Frank Azzaretto making a move for second place now on Cameron Taylor. And he's going to make it look easy as Taylor gives him three lanes of room. And uh, Jefferson has finally caught Benson again. And he's going to try and put him back one lap down. This will be good news for him because... Uh, Benson has had a lot of speed on these restarts, but it doesn't seem like he's got the long run pace as it looks like Sapphire Anderson was stalling there uh, on the apron. H.J. Wheat Farmer doing a great job. He's up in the top five. Uh, he got around Ike Durbin there. And Ramsey Cockner is up in the top ten. He's in ninth place right now. So a uh, good day for both of these guys. They really needed this on an oval. As uh, Mark Burt, haven't talked about him much, he is still hanging on the lead lap. He is in seventh place, the last car in the lead lap. And uh, he's just minded his own business in traffic, hasn't really contended up front at all, but has just survived on the lead lap and has done a great job. As now with just a few laps to go, you can see the gap here. This is under 10 to go. This is lap 193, 192, coming to 193. And uh, looks like Jefferson's got a pretty big lead. Oh, there's the caution, lap 193. Did not want to see that for John Jefferson. I'm sure he's sweating bullets now. As looks like Kelly Blackwater just dumped Duncan Cobb into the wall. That was completely unnecessary. And uh, looks like we're going to get the restart with just two laps to go. So a natural green-white checkered here with uh, Jefferson. Benson one lap down, Azzaretto there in second place, two cars back, 
as Jefferson gets a slow start on lap 199. Benson's going to make a move to the bottom. Azaretto's going to capitalize, and Azaretto's going to take the lead on the bottom. Let's see if he can hang with him. Jefferson. Jefferson on the outside, and Azaretto's going to slide up a bit. Jefferson gets the run, but I think Azaretto's going to lead lap coming to the white flag. Azaretto on the bottom, making the move around. We've got a caution coming. There's the caution. Big wreck in turn one, but Frank Azaretto coming through turn number four is going to take his first career win at the Grand Detour of Western Illinois in dramatic fashion, passing John Jefferson on the last lap. Wow, let's take a look and see what happened here. We've got about four incidents to look at. Jerry Mike got put into the wall by Kyle McWulla. Spun by McWulla there, and that was Israel Bruce going around too. Big incident in turn number one, though, is looking at Daniel Sharp here. That's... Uh, Marshall in the wall, he gets into Olsen. Foray sends him around. Mark Burt, Akio Gifu goes over. Uh, that was Olsen involved again. Gonna go on board with Donnie Olsen and see what happened here. They went five wide coming off of turn number four to the white flag as Marshall hit the wall, came down low. Olsen spun him. Just absolute chaos and carnage as Olsen goes into the wall. There you see Gifu flipping. And uh, going to take a look at what happened with Pliskin, because he was involved with this as well, as he pulls low. We had about four separate incidents happening all at once, and uh, Pliskin did a decent job of avoiding that for the most part. Taking a look at the results, as heartbreaking as that second place is for John Jefferson, that's going to do Stefan's Racing wonders in the team standings. Andy Lambert there for ROG Motorsports first and third and you see kelly blackwater there in 11th they had a great points day all three of them cameron taylor p4 excellent run for him three races two top fives and three top tens so cameron taylor making a case for going full-time again next year ike durbin p5 no hood excellent effort for the championship leader and that's going to do him a lot of good and extending his championship lead hj wheat farmer there in sixth place good run for him chris benson Got back on the lead lap at the very end of that race and finished in seventh place, getting around Mark Burt, who was unable to complete the final lap of the race. Ramsey Cockner, P9. Excellent effort for him on an oval. And Dan Ferrey rounds out the top 10 for Accelerator Motorsports. Didn't talk about his late surge, but a top 10 for them is going to do them a great bit in the team standings as well. Scott Wollen, quiet run for him, P12. Kyle McWulla fell back late and finished P13. Casey Lester. P14, great job for him in that double zero car. Tom Delgado, P15, uh, one of the few races that he's finished outside the top 10 this year. Daniel Sharp, P16, good run for him. Ben Worthington, despite his issues throughout the day, finished P17, rallied back to get a top 20. Jerry Myatt, P18, after his issues. Ryan Matthews, P19, didn't talk about him all day. He fell about five laps down, but still finished P19. And Donnie Olson, Managed to get 20th place despite being five laps down very early on. Did not lose another lap after that pit stop. Now taking a look at the point standings. As a result of being one of the only drivers in the top 10 to not have issues today, Ike Durbin's points lead has ballooned from 17 to 48, a full race over Ben Atkins in second place. It's 77 points back to third place James Hewitt and 91 back to fourth, which is Tom Delgado. Brian Gallagher at fifth in points, having a pretty good year for himself. Uh, had a lot of issues today and did not make it to the checkered flag. Louis Ballard, P6, blew up when leading. He could have had a big points day. Gaspar D'Souza has had a rough few weeks. He's fallen from third, fourth in the standings, down to seventh. And we've got a great battle for Rookie of the Year between Sapphire Anderson and Mark Burton, eighth and ninth in points. Josh Marshall up in the top ten by one point over Tom Wilson there. Andy Lambert, two points behind Wilson in twelfth. Tied with Ian Elias there. Ramsey Cockner, P14, having a good season for himself. H.J. Wheat Farmer moves back up to 15th place, becoming the best place in Enterprises car over uh, Duncan Cobb there. Alina Lazareva, P17, uh, lost a couple spots this week. Barbara Burt, P18. Alex Phillips could have moved up into the top 15 in points with a good day here today. And Nicholas Cordovos, despite missing the past few races, is still 20th in points. Should note that Frank Azzaretto, 
from the round of Russia to after this race has moved from 37th to 21st in points and is only 8 points behind Nicholas Korodovos for that 20th spot in points. Finally, taking a look at the team standings, Manicor Engineering has opened up their gap over Paloma Autosport after this race and look to be the odds-on favorites to take the team championship at the end of the year. Double B Motorsports passed Australian Motorsports for 5th, ROG Motorsports jumped up to 7th over Johnson Racing, and uh, Clayson Enterprises has increased their gap over Accelerator Motorsports slightly. However, uh, Accelerator Motorsports and Stefan's Racing have both cleared the 1,000 points mark, meaning that all teams are now over 1,000 points.